also have Rich Goldberg, who's a senior advisor for the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Thank Thanks both. for coming as well. Caroline, what's your sense about uh, the damage done or lack thereof, given all of the missiles that were repelled, and what will come next in terms of an Israeli response? Well, I just uh, got a report that there's another incoming barrage from Iran as we speak. So, you know, it may come uh, soon. It may come in several hours. It's not quite clear. But it means that this is not over yet. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is, yeah, it doesn't look like, it doesn't appear that a lot of damage was caused from this because of our interceptor missiles and also because of actions taken by the United States and other and other militaries allied uh, with the United States uh to intercept the Iranian projectiles, but this is a significant, a significant uh, move by Iran because it's unmasking Iran really as the mastermind of everything that's been happening in the region. Because all of the attacks that Israel has been absorbing to date have been carried out by terror armies that Iran built and commands. So this is another move in Iran's onslaught against Israel and. Uh, it has to be seen as such, and we have to view the war as a regional war, which it is, directed from Tehran. Uh, Rich, uh, bringing you into the conversation here, uh, we'll obviously be watching uh, more, you know, reaction from Israel tomorrow. But speak to us tonight about the reaction so far from President Biden and lack thereof response, actually. Well, the first thing is obviously in the heat of the moment, uh, as Iran is launching uh, one of the largest scale attacks attacks in its history, unprecedented, unacceptable, uh, crossing the Rubicon here in this multi-pronged, multi-platformed assault on a democratic ally. Remember, violating the sovereign airspace of many countries along the way, uh, this terror-sponsoring state attacked our ally tonight, and the United States military did step in, along with the United Kingdom's military as well, and we hear reports, maybe the Jordanians, maybe the Saudis even quietly assisting Israel and bringing down as much as possible as this threat approached the state of Israel. So credit due for stepping in in the moment and providing maximum missile defense and uh, drone defense capabilities when our ally was under attack. However, we need to understand that this is a crossing of the Rubicon. This is unprecedented in its scale and nature. It means that Iran did not have a miscalculation tonight. It had a calculation. Mm. It's only a miscalculation if they pay a price for it. The calculation is they looked at the United States. They looked at $10 billion of a sanctions waiver from President Biden. They looked at oil being uh, shipped to China without any interruption from the United States. They looked at political warfare against Israel on a daily basis. They saw Canada cut off arms sales. Yeah. They saw domestic unrest in Israel, and they said, we can do this, we can normalize what they did tonight. If we do not see Iran pay a significant consequence, militarily, politically, and economically, they will have normalized what we just saw, and that cannot happen. Caroline, react to that about a crossing of the Rubicon. We also heard earlier from Jonathan Conriquez, a former spokesman uh, at the IDF, that he believes uh, a Rubicon was crossed as well, that this is a whole new paradigm shift, that Iran crossed a line and you can't go back. And this is a whole new error in these Mideast tensions. Is that an exaggeration or do you agree, Caroline? I agree wholeheartedly. I think that two things have to happen. The first thing that has to happen is that Israel has to counterattack against Iran in Iran. And the other thing that I think has to happen is that Israel has to conclude the conventional phase of the war in Gaza by seizing control of the city of Rafah and the international border with Egypt and destroying the rest of Hamas's forces. Because what I think one of the things that emboldens Iran to attack is, as, as Richard said, the United States is waging effectively political warfare against Israel and saying that we're not going to get arms from the United States if we defeat Hamas. So I think these things are very important. We cannot be in a defensive pose when we are being assaulted on six fronts by Iran and its proxies. We have to go and we have to win. And that's it. Clearly, that's been the mission. And it uh, it all started on October the 7th. I mean, that is really, this is, this was, uh, you know, what has brought us here. And, you know, next week, uh, Rich, will have an aid bill 
it will not just be Israel. It'll be Ukraine. It'll be Taiwan. And, and D.C. will be batting it around. And we've seen sort of a lot of the stumbling blocks as well with some of this. Um, what are your thoughts on what we may be seeing in the days ahead as we look at the military response? Obviously, there'll be a strong uh, response, too, is, you know, uh, Israel probably needs to replenish after tonight. I mean, that's what one of our military experts said mm -hmm. is like they, they went probably, you know, they fought very hard, but this will be something that they need support from. Yeah, it's, it's going to be very important to backfill the Israelis as much as possible uh, with what was expended tonight. Now, some of these are longer term purchases uh, while the Israelis are making things in Israel. Uh, and some of the aid that's in the supplemental is a longer term backfill for Israel, still very important mm -hmm. uh, for their procurement needs. Uh, but I, I'm hopeful that we will see uh, at least an up or down vote uh, in the House and Senate that we will let the chips uh, fall where they might. Those that want to stand with a democracy that is under attack, let them vote yes, and let's send uh, our allies the aid that they need. Uh, absolutely, uh, Rich. And Caroline, real quick, I'm noticing on social media there, are, there is a talk of a red alert uh, in the Golan Heights nor, uh, around northeastern Israel, likely due to rocket fire from Hezbollah in Lebanon, which might have been your reference earlier to another round of attacks. So, Hezbollah does this, unfortunately, and tragically very frequently, so it's unclear right now whether that's a, a second wave of attacks, new drones, new rockets, but we, we, we are seeing reports, at least, of Hezbollah. Real yeah. quick, final thought from you, Caroline. Look, I think you're, I, I think, I, I'm not clear because they, the, it doesn't matter what the report is. Hezbollah has shot over 100 uh, drones and rockets at Israel today as well. It's not only an attack from Iran, it's a coordinated attack with their proxy army, uh, Hezbollah, which controls the state of Lebanon. And Israel is going to have to deal with yeah. that with that threat. There are, and we have 80,000 internal refugees who live in the border communities with Lebanon that cannot go home until Israel removes Hezbollah from the border. And so this is another front that awaits, which is why the military assistance from the United States really is critical. Yeah, it certainly is. Caroline, Rich, we appreciate your insights tonight. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, our live coverage continues after a quick break right here on Newsmax.